Hi, my name is Maxo, and I just spent two days sleeping in my car so that I could ski what is likely to be the biggest snow day of the season here in Colorado. And this experience was really crazy, so I just wanted to share with you guys what it was like sleeping in my car and skiing this big storm. I, I honestly had no idea what to expect going into this. I've never done anything like this before. I've never slept in my car to go skiing. And I'd also never skied a really big storm day like Friday. And I have to say, everything worked out really well. The skiing was phenomenal. It was actually the best ski day I've ever had in my life. And I've been skiing for almost 20 years. And sleeping in my car wasn't that bad. There were a few things that were uncomfortable, but because this was a last minute trip, I knew that I couldn't prepare properly. And there's a lot of things I would do differently next time, but in all, it was okay, and I would do it again. So on Wednesday, there were some rumors flying around about a big storm coming to Colorado. They were predicting more than 24 hours of continuous heavy snow in Summit County, with snow totals reaching one to two feet of snow. And this kind of storm does not come very often. Sure, we get a lot of snow here in Colorado, but usually we don't get this much all at once. And so this is a really special event. I don't remember there being a storm like this last year, and because of that, I knew I had to get out into the mountains and ski it this year. So on Thursday, I got off work at 4 p.m., and I very hastily packed my things together, threw everything in my car, and I was able to hit the road at 5 and it took me about five hours to get up to Summit County, which is a little longer than I expected. The problem was they had already closed I-70, and I got caught up with a bunch of people that were trying to get through after the closure. And another thing that was going on is that Loveland Pass was closed, so all hazardous material vehicles had to be routed through Eisenhower Tunnel. And when they do that, they close the tunnel to all other traffic. So effectively, when Loveland Pass is closed, you can expect to wait about an hour or longer, depending on traffic, at the tunnel. And it meant that I got in super late. All the places that I wanted to get food were closed at that point. So I had a Safeway Parfait and Taco Bell for dinner, which is not typically how I like to eat, although I do have a weak spot for Taco Bell. So it wasn't all bad. And then I started driving around looking for a place to spend the night, and I quickly decided to just spend the night in the Walmart parking lot. I did this because there were a bunch of people already in the lot, and I knew no one was going to bother me. Now, I still felt kind of guilty spending the night in the lot, because in any parking lot, it's someone's job to keep the lot clear of snow, and I knew that I was getting in this guy's way. You know, he wouldn't be able to clear the spot that I was in. So this is something I would keep in mind if you're considering sleeping in your car so that you can go skiing, is that if it's snowing a lot, you're going to be in some plow driver's way. There's just no way that I see around it. So anyways, I rigged up some makeshift window coverings because the Walmart parking lot is very well illuminated, and I went to sleep. I didn't sleep the best. I probably woke up every couple of hours. At about 3 in the morning, the plow driver came in and started plowing the lot, which was very loud. And then at about 5.45, I just woke up. I was pretty cold at that point. I had a 20 degree bag, which usually works pretty well, but because the space in my car is so small, my feet were smushed against the hatch and that had packed down all the insulation by my feet. So my feet were cold and that kind of makes my whole body cold. So when I got up, I just immediately started my car and drove to the ski area. I blasted the heat the whole way and then I ate breakfast in my car once I had parked at Copper. And so once I had had breakfast and gotten all my ski gear on, I walked out to the bus stop and I was going to get on a bus that takes you to the Super B lift. And I was about to get on that lift when the bus just closed its doors and drove away. And I was super confused and then a Copper employee told me that they weren't opening that lift right away. So I got on a different bus to Center Village and went straight to the lift line at the American Eagle lift. I got in the lift line at about 7.45, and the lift doesn't open until 9, so there were about 20 people in front of me in line, and it was snowing heavily. And over the next hour and 15 minutes, the line really filled out. So, 9 o'clock rolls around, and you can really feel the energy at this point. There's several hundred people waiting in line, waiting to rip up this powder, and then the announcement comes that they're not going to open the lift on time. 
And people were pretty upset about this. The reason that they weren't going to open the lift is because they had to do avalanche mitigation. And I am all for that. On a big snow day, you should expect that the lifts will not open on time and that a lot of lifts will not open at all because of the avalanche danger. So initially they told us 15-30 minutes until the lift would open. And there was also a rumor that this was guaranteed to be the first lift open. And then two things happened in short succession that really upset people that were waiting for this lift to open. Uh, first, they opened the other lift at Center Village, the American Flyer lift. And then just a few minutes later, all of Copper's ski school came shredding down the mountain. All of a sudden, there's like 30 people up on the hill just tearing up the powder doing 180s, doing tricks, going nuts, hooting and hollering while we're all waiting to ski that snow. And that's when everyone started booing, throwing snowballs, and it was pretty ugly. After that, the ski instructors did one or two more laps, and again, they just came down in a big group and just shredded up the snow at the very bottom. As it turns out, they were just on one run, so there was plenty of snow up there that was untracked by them. but. The mood was really sour at this point. So at this point, Copper Mountain was in full-on riot control. There was a guy with a megaphone trying to calm people down. Copper employees were walking around the lift line handing out free drink tokens, t-shirts, reusable shopping bags all kinds of stuff to try to calm people down because people were so upset, primarily at the uh, ski instructors who were coming down and getting free laps before everyone else. And so finally, everyone calmed down a little bit and then they opened the lift. And I didn't get any footage of this first run because it was so hectic getting up there and getting on the run, but it was the most ridiculous run of my life. I started to go down the hill and I wasn't on the first chair and I look around the corner and I see all the snow is totally untracked and I'm thinking what the heck how am I the first person here and then I crest this berm and everyone is stuck at the bottom just hiking through the snow and this is not the steepest blue run but it's still a blue but the problem was that the snow was so deep that even if you're pointing straight downhill the snow would bring you to a stop so this ridiculous chaotic leapfrog sort of thing started developing where you're riding in someone else's tracks and then you pass them and go 15 feet and then they ride in your tracks and pass you and go 15 feet and you're just hopping back and forth back and forth and I think the whole run I was just pointing my ski straight down the mountain I would maybe made one turn and came to a dead stop and uh, and saying it out loud, it doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun just straight lining down a hill, but it was a blast. I've never experienced anything like this before. The snow was so deep. It was just insane. Oh my god. <clears throat> that was insane. And uh, the second run was a little better actually because there were these tracks built in so you could get some speed up and then go make a few turns and then come back to the track. And this really set the, the tone for the rest of the day. So after I got a few laps on the American Eagle, they opened up the Super B lift, which actually services black terrain. And that was amazing because these runs are actually steep enough that you can go down and track out this fresh snow. So that was the highlight of my day, the highlight of my skiing career. It was just perfect. So after I did a few laps on the Super B side of the mountain, which is a little steeper, I decided to venture into the trees a little bit. And this is when I made a huge mistake. I left the main track through the trees and went off to try to find my own path. And as you can see, it just leveled out on me. And uh, it was an incredible amount of effort to get out of the trees from this point. I had to break my own trail for about 100 yards, and then finally I joined up with another path, but what happened is I caught up with the person who had made that path, and they were struggling too. So together we were able to climb out of the trees back onto a main run, and at that point I was soaked inside and out from the snow and sweating, my goggles were fogged up and wet, and so I had to go to the lodge. 
So once I got mostly dried off and defogged, I went back out there, skied the rest of the day. It was a great day. So to be honest, I should have stopped skiing sooner that day. I skied until the lift closed. And skiing this really deep snow is a lot of work. And by the end of the day, my legs were really paying the price for that. The last few runs that I did, I was falling over and just not skiing with good technique. So on these big days, it's okay to quit early, I think. Most people did. So I skied until the lifts closed at 4 and then walked over to the parking lot. And the parking lot was utter chaos. People were stuck in the snow. I had helped a bunch of people push their cars out of snow drifts and dig people out. But at some point, I had to leave because there were just so many people struggling to get their cars out of the lot. I would have been there all night. So at that point, I drove to Frisco and got some dinner. And while I was eating dinner, I looked at the traffic data and realized that they had again closed I-70. Now, I wasn't sure if they were going to reopen the interstate, but even if they did, I knew that my drive home was going to be terrible and that I should just wait until Saturday when there was supposed to be a short break in the weather. So I again slept in my car that night. I made some pretty big mistakes as far as choosing where to sleep. Because the interstate was closed, Frisco opened up their middle school to stranded travelers. And in hindsight, I should have just gone straight to that parking lot and parked there overnight, which is actually where I wound up. But first I drove around Frisco looking for some street parking. And this was just stupid. I don't know how else to describe this. Every block I went down, there was a sign saying no parking between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. or something along those lines. And the reason they have these signs is so that they can do snow removal. Eventually, I found a block where there wasn't one of these signs. And the reason why I parked there is because it was a little darker. The middle school parking lot was lit up really bright and the Walmart parking lot was super bright too. And I don't sleep very well when there's a lot of bright lights. So I found this quiet, dark side street and decided to sleep there. And that went all right. I had a bunch of cars around me on either side and I figured they were parking overnight also. Unfortunately, I woke up at 2 in the morning and noticed all of the cars that were around me were gone. And that revealed the no parking sign, which was hidden behind a truck. So at that point, I should have moved, but I didn't. So I waited for the plow to come, and it did, and shortly after, a tow truck showed up. And thankfully, the tow truck driver was really nice. He got out, knocked on my window, and I apologized, and it was super embarrassing, really. And I just drove to the middle school and spent the rest of the night there. So I don't know what I was thinking trying to park on the street. I knew it was a bad idea. I guess I was being selfish. I wanted a dark, quiet place to sleep, and this street was pretty nice. but. I wound up getting in the way and I feel bad about that. So I did a similar routine on Saturday morning. I got up early, drove to the copper parking lot, ate breakfast in my car, and then got in the lift line really early. And that worked out really well. I got some good runs in in the morning. But by 9.45, so many people were at copper that all of the lift lines were really long. So at that point, I decided to do just one more run. I happened to catch them dropping the rope on this little area. I don't remember the name of the area, but I happened to catch a rope drop, which was pretty cool. Got some fresh tracks in the trees. And then I decided to drive home, which was by and large okay. It was still pretty crazy though, because a lot of the on-ramps were just filled with snow. So while the highway was just wet, people getting on the highway had no opportunity to get up to speed and no visibility of the road either. So you'd just have cars pulling out in front of you going 10 miles per hour. And then heading up to the Eisenhower Tunnel, the far right lane would come and go as the wall of snow kind of came into your lane and then left. So it was, it was a dicey drive. It wound up taking about two and a half hours to get home, which isn't too bad. So you might be wondering why I decided to sleep in my car instead of going to a regular hotel. And the reason why is because I'm actually converting a van into a camper right now. And my intention with the van is that I'm going to be able to spend a lot less money on lodging and therefore afford a lot more outdoor experiences in other ways. So this experience was sort of a proof of concept that I can actually sleep in a vehicle in the winter and be reasonably comfortable. There were some aspects that were uncomfortable, but I hope to solve that with the full build out of my van. 
So if you're interested in keeping track of my progress on this van and seeing how it works out for me, please feel free to subscribe. If you're not interested, don't. Also, this is my first ever YouTube video, and so if you guys have any comments or suggestions, I would love to hear them. I am interested in being a content creator, but I'm not sure if it's right for me, so I'd love to hear some feedback, things I can do differently so I can be better at this. And that's it, so uh, thank you for watching. Okay. Ten minutes.